Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you to a video training about Inspire and EBSCO eBooks. I am going to scroll down here to show you on the Indiana State Library page. We do have a link here on a tile to Inspire, so I'm going to click on that first. And then, because we know which database we're going to actually be using, uh, I feel like the easiest way to get to EBSCO eBooks is to go to the databases A to Z tab here, uh, because this just organizes all of the databases into an alphabetical list. So we just need to scroll down here, and whenever we scroll down, we can see that in addition to the EBSCO ebook collection that we already had, we have also added a K through 8 collection, a high school collection, and a public library collection. And all of these are curated just for those audiences. So, uh, for example, if you're working in an elementary school, or you're a parent, or you're trying to help someone. Uh, that's in the public library and they have a homework assignment and they're at the elementary through middle school level. You could go here to ebook K through 8 collection. And this is the screen that will show whenever you access the ebook collection. I'll just scroll down very slowly so that I don't make you dizzy. Uh, as you can see over here on the left, there are different categories that you can search by. Here on the top, they have some highlighted books, and those are probably new books that they've added. Uh, and then they have some featured ebooks down here as well. And you could actually choose either by just clicking on a book, you know, if you're just browsing. You can also do a search up here in the search line, and you can also go down here to the different categories and try to hunt for a book. So let's just say that we want um, to try, let's see, let's see what's in the highlights here. We'll pick a book that looks interesting. All right, summer days, fall days. Let's see what's in this book. Okay, so when you click on the cover of the book, this is the screen that you will see next. And I'm just going to scroll down for this too. Uh, this shows you a detailed record, gives you the author's name, uh, a description of the book gives you a table of contents. Over here to the left, you can see that there are different choices that you can choose to do a download. You can either uh, try to read it in PDF full text. So let's try that first. And when you load a book in uh, PDF full text, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to basically look like the book uh, if you were holding it in your hand. So here's the first page, and the second page. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> As you can see, it's very, very basic for K through eight um, and has some very colorful pictures. Now, whenever you want to actually do a full download of a book, you are going to be able to um, choose that, but before you actually download a book, you're gonna have to establish an EBSCO e host folder, which I already have, and I actually sign into mine through my Google account. So I'm going to go up here to sign in to show you what that looks like. 
All right, so here, if a student or teacher wants to download a book and they've never done that before with EBSCO eBooks, here is where they could either sign up for an account, continue with Google, which is what I do just so I don't have to remember another username and password, or if you've already been established as a user and have a username and password, this is where you would enter that. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose continue with Google. This is my personal account. Okay, so now you can see that I am signed in because it says sign out <laughs> and here the folder is open. Uh, that means I've already gotten some things in my folder. So before we do a full download, I also want to show you that you can also do separate downloads per chapter or per page. So let's go to, let's say we just want to download this section here, the chapter on summer days and fall days. I'm gonna click download chapter. Okay, and this brings up the actual instruction uh, window. And I need to point out that EBSCO eBooks for the Indiana population, schools, public libraries, et cetera, has unlimited use licenses. And by that, it means that there can be 100 students reading the same book at the same time, and it can be checked out to all 100 students. Now, the only caveat as far as downloading pages or chapters is that you are only allowed to download or print 100 pages at a time. So you could actually, um, if you just wanted the current page, you could choose that. If you wanted to choose pages, you know, let's say this is a very, very short book, but let's say if it was, you know, through 20 pages, you could choose um, current page and then the next five pages. And then this one, we just want this chapter anyway, the summer days, fall days. So I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna choose download PDF. So it downloads over here. And when I bring it up on my laptop, this is what it looks like. So you will have that section in your folder. Okay, so let's go to uh, the top of the screen here uh, because I want to show you there are several different options. Um, you know, before I do that, actually, I'm going to go back to the list and choose something that has a little bit more, um, has more pages or more content. Just to have us, just so we have some things to uh, mess around with. All right, here, let's, baseball season's coming up. Uh, let's see what excelling in baseball looks like. And you know, this could be something where you might have students doing reports on spring sports or spring activities. Um, this shows you the information all the way down. It gives you a list of the table of contents. This is very nice for students too, because they can glance through the table of contents to see if the book uh, is gonna answer the kinds of questions that they need to answer for their research or reading. Uh, you know, this might be just something that they're interested in reading for fun. Um, so this can also, they can just kind of scroll through here to see if it looks like something they'll be interested in. And here you'll see this print email or save 100 pages. And that's what I was talking about previously, that that is the limit as far as printing, emailing or saving, but you also have unlimited copy and paste, which means you can copy and paste it into another document. 
And this is really, really important, that concurrent user level. Unlimited user access means just that, that they, it does not matter how many users that you have accessing a book at the same time, it does, it's included. So, you know, if you want um, 50 students to read this book, or if you just want a reading group to read this book, uh, you can do that and have them all check the book out at the exact same time. All right, so let's go in again. Well, before I move on to the other uh, screen, let's just look over here. We talked about this on the left, where you can actually do the, uh, you know, PDF or full download. Here are the table of contents, which I just showed you. And then over here on the right hand side, are some tools that you can use uh, once you choose this book. You can save it to your Google Drive. You can add it to your EBSCOhost folder, which we just opened. Uh, and this will be something that as a public librarian or a school librarian, you'll need to decide how you want students to register and sign up for an EBSCOhost folder account. Uh, it could just be something like at a school you may already have. Students may already have access on iPads or uh, Chromebooks and they sign in with the username and password to those. And so you could use the same username and password for, um, you know, for an EBSCO host folder as well. With the public library, you know, it could be that a, a parent actually accesses the account if they don't want to create an account for their student. So there's going to be different ways to approach that. And I think that's just something that you'll have to work through on the on the local level as far as how you want to handle that. All right, and then we have uh, print and email and save. And then we have the site option, which will actually give us citations in different format. We can export the book and we can also create a note. So most of those are pretty self-explanatory. Let's go into site. And here are choices of citation format. Uh, and I'm just going to go to the MLA format because I used to work at a high school and that's what we used all the time. So I'm going to choose. Well, actually, I don't even have to click on that. It already has the citation right here for the book uh, that we are actually on right now. So the student could copy and paste this to their bibliography and it would already be done for them. All right, and then let's look at the export feature. The export feature is if your library maybe uses some kind of bibliographic software uh, like Noodle Tools or EasyBib. Uh, those are ones that I'm familiar with. Um, of course, here's the Mark 21 format. So if you want to actually um, export it into one of these kind of programs, this is where you would do that. You would choose, I'll just say Noodle Tools, and I'll click Save. And here it will have the um, citation right here and then you would just um, well this is importing the source so after you got finished importing the different sources that you're using for your research paper then you could actually go through in through this program to actually print out the bibliography all right and then create note Whenever you open up a book, let's go ahead and, well, I'll just show you from here because it's also available on the other page. If you are doing research and you want to keep track of your notes, you can actually do that here by typing in notes. Uh, I'm just going to say, oops, hang on. Let me go back down there. Create a note. 
you note uh, views for English paper. Type in a note for this book, click save, and there you have it. If you click on, you'll see notes right here. And here's the note that I created. And I could either delete it or I could open it up and add more notes. Uh, you can sign in to your EBSCOhost folder to store the notes. You can also print them out. And all of these are so cool as far as different options for students to use and to make research easier for them. Uh, and then last but not least is a permalink. And whenever you're doing a research paper um, through EBSCO, it would be good to save your permalink because that is a link that will not change. It is static. So anytime you would go to that link, it would take you right back to this book. All right, so that's a little bit about what's on the page when you get your detailed record. Uh, look, I'm going to click on the Okay, I just wanted to bring the book up so you could see it. All right, here you have your, um, you know, your book. And over here to the left, we have the same uh, information that we were talking about before, the table of contents, the fact that there are unlimited copies available, unrestricted download, unlimited copy and paste, and then as far as publisher permissions, uh, publishers have said that you can print, email, or save up to 100 pages. All right, so let's do a full download. I also want to just point out before I do do that full download, here are very similar type um, tabs to what I just showed you on the right hand side of the previous page. It's got the Google Drive, you know, where you can save certain pages. So this will also, once you actually get into the book, you have access to those uh, tools as well. All right, let's do full download. Okay, it's telling me I need to sign in or create an account depending on if I've ever done this before. Uh, but since I have, I'm going to click sign in. And I'm going to say continue with Google. And that will get us in. And then uh, this shows what I can choose as far as downloading the book. Uh, before we were just talking about like maybe printing out certain pages, but if you want to download the whole book, this is the screen once you log in that you will see. You can actually choose the number of days you would like to borrow the book here. So I don't really need it uh, 21 days. I just need it a couple weeks, so I'll change that. And then it gives us download formats. This one is actually just giving me uh, the PDF because it's recommended for a desktop and, I have, and I'm on my laptop. So, and the other thing that I forgot to mention, well, actually didn't forget to mention, but I want to mention is that you also have to make sure that your computers, either or laptops or devices or whoever or whatever <laughs> is accessing uh, the EBSCO ebook program has to have Adobe Digital Editions installed on it. So if you're using this with students uh, with iPads or Chromebooks, it needs to have Adobe Digital Editions on, it, on that device before it, you even start using or trying to download ebooks from EBSCO ebooks. Um, also, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about 
we have an app now. EBSCO has an app, and so I'm going to show you how to do that as well, which is kind of related uh, to this Adobe Digital Editions. But I did want to point that out. And also I wanted to point out that the EPUB function or choice is grayed out because it's the one that is recommended for mobile devices, which I'm using a laptop right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click full download. And that downloads the book to me. How do I want to open this file? All right, well, I have not run into that before. Let's see what happens if I go in to my folder. Okay, that did not work. Okay, let's try that one more time. Full download, success. I guess I was too impatient. I didn't actually wait for it to say it had downloaded. It has now downloaded. So I'm going to close this. Notice that it says how much time you have left in the book. Uh, another thing I want to say about that is, you know, you can choose the length of the checkout period. And once you read the book, you really need to uh, check it back in because it will not automatically check back in. If you do not turn it in and then you go to access it later past the 14 day, you won't have access to it. It'll just be there kind of as a placeholder. Uh, so to keep your account clean and all of that, I would just say once you finish a book, you're using a book, uh, make sure that you uh, turn it back in. OK, let's try this again. All right, let's see what my checkouts look like. I have checked out Inside Smartphones, The Moon Maiden, and now I have checked out Excelling It in Baseball. This shows that I can read it in PDF full text. Of course, I already did the full download. Uh, it didn't actually react like I wanted it to, so uh, I'm probably gonna have to play around with that a little bit. Um, but since I've already downloaded it, I should just be able to click on PDF full text and it'll pop right up. And there we have it. And just as a reminder, the table of contents is over here to the side. You can always just download certain portions of the book as well. All right, so let's go back to new search. This takes us back to the screen that we started. And I want to show you as librarians a resource that you can use at, when you're training patrons. Uh, whenever you go down here, you can see that there are, is support information for how to use EBSCO eBooks. And I'm just gonna make sure, I'm gonna go through this to make sure that I've covered everything and I didn't leave anything out. Uh, and just kind of as a review. Um, of course, this is the default screen. What you'll see whenever you uh, open up EBSCO eBooks and how to actually search, uh, which we've done. We did a, well, actually we didn't do a, a general search. We actually chose a book that was already highlighted. And then once, but this person chose to search for business books. And so this shows a list of results that they got when they searched for business. And you'll see there's several books about business. And 
so here it shows the different be, below the record for each book. It shows the different options about how you can do the uh, look at it through PDF full text, e EPUB full text, full download, table of contents, and then the most relevant pages from this ebook, which I have not played around with that. That sounds interesting. OK, and then of course we talked about that we have unlimited use. Um, this library does not. It says that it has limited user access. There's only three copies available. Well, luckily our library is not like that and we have unlimited use, so we don't have to worry about who's checking out the book at the same time. Uh, and then here's the ebook reader, uh, which we talked about. Uh, we want the Adobe Digital Editions is something that you'll want to make sure is installed on your computers. And then we also have the different tools and different options as far as what we can do with information from the book. We can either like download the whole book. Uh, we can add it to our folder to refer to later. Uh, save pages, site pages. There's a dictionary feature. So if a student's reading a book and um, you know they come across a word they don't understand, they can access the dictionary. Uh, so I don't think I mentioned the dictionary earlier, but it is a tool that you can use. This just shows the navigation and most of you are very familiar with this, uh, but you would want to point this out to students or children that you know this advances the pages. This makes the text bigger. Uh, you know this makes it full screen. So you could review all of those with them. All right. Here we go to the actual downloading of a book. And whenever you do the full download, this is the screen that you get where you can choose how many days. Uh, you can also choose if there's a choice. Um, ours was grayed out on the other one, but if both of them are available, you can choose if you want it for uh, PDF format or if you want the EPUB format. So that one actually does have a choice. And here's that reminder about Adobe Digital Editions or equivalent installed. And by equivalent, that means some type of ebook reader. I, I am sharing here um, my iPhone screen. Uh, I actually have Let's View installed on my laptop and on my phone. So I wanted to show you the actual EBSCO app and how you're going to use that. Uh, so I have it set up on my, I have a work tile here. And in the previous video, I was talking about how uh, you needed to have digital editions for the books and the ebooks from EBSCO. Uh, so I have installed that there. And then I went to the App Store and I downloaded the EBSCO app. Uh, and so when it comes up, this is what it looks like on your screen. Uh, it automatically recognizes me because I think I was already signed in. Uh, let me go ahead and try to sign out so I can show you that. Okay. Let's go back there. And so this would be once you downloaded the app, this is the screen you would see. So you would just want to click get started and then you find your institution. So you can either search by the name, uh, postal, code, postal code or city. So I'm going to type in Indiana State Library. And as I do that, you can see the other libraries that are popping up as choices. OK, so there's Indiana State Library. And I'm going to connect to my institution. Uh, it wants to sign in, so I'm going to say continue. And remember whenever I told you that you had to have an EBSCO host folder? Here it is again. You have to have it on your phone as well, but if you've set it up, once you've set up an EBSCO, EBSCO host folder, then you're good. You don't have to set it up again. All you have to do is sign in. 
So uh, as I told you previously, I just use my Google account. So I'm going to go through my personal Google account here. Uh, and then I'm back to the screen that we saw originally uh, because I was already signed in. So you can see at the top, you know, it has um, welcome. This is a book that I had used. These books are books that I had used for trainings uh, whenever I was playing around with it. You can also uh, down here, not only is this for ebooks, but it also includes articles um, related to different content. And you can see the different, the recent subjects. Uh, I had the one that was uh, the book about the moon maiden was a Japanese fairy tale. Uh, so you can see, you know, um, fairy tales, Japan, folklore, Japan. But I had also been looking at the photosynthesis books, so other um, subjects related to more science topics are showing up there. And so let's go, I'm going to click on the search, um, you know, the little magnifying glass down there, and let's look for, um, let's look for books about trees. All right, and whenever you type that in, then you get a variety of things. And we also have these options at the top where it says peer reviewed, full text, all dates. Those are things that you can change. If you want to change the uh, how many, you know, results you get from what year you can do that. Uh, so here we go. I went in and clicked on trees. And so the very, very first one is an ebook. It mentions that. Uh, so as you scroll down, you can see there are several ebooks related to trees. And so I'm going to click on this first one. And OK, it says that this one is not actually ready to download per the library. So I don't know if that's one that's just been added recently. Um, let's just go down here a little bit. OK, here we go. This sounds interesting. Has nothing probably to do with trees, but tree is in the title. Tree of Life, Turkish Home Cooking. All right, here we go. You can see at the top the title. It has uh, the publication date, the author, the cover, has the different subjects. And also notice available unlimited copies. And that was what I had talked about in the previous workshop was because that means you can check out. I mean, it's just no limit, no limit to how many people can check this book out. All right, so I'm going to hit download ebook. And this is what it looks like on the phone when you want to, or when it's asking you like how long you want to keep or check out the book. So I'm just going to say 14 days, and then I'm going to choose download ebook. And here we go. It's a very pretty title. I mean, not title, pretty, very pretty cover. OK, so it's about Turkish home cooking. I'm just scrolling through so you can see what it looks like on a phone. You know, and let's go back to uh, the table of contents. Let's do the first one whenever I do that. OK, so it just takes me to uh, right to the chapter. But we do have different choices on the bottom. Um, the first one is where you can actually uh, bookmark pages, you know, see the table of contents again, or you can choose or hop into what you want. Uh, you know, maybe you just are interested in Turkish desserts, so you want chapter 11. Um, so that would be me because I am a big fan of dessert. Um, so you can see that that would help you narrow down your uh, search results. 
You can also increase the text size. You can uh, change the color scheme a little bit. Uh, and you can bookmark it. And I'm going to you know, bookmark that one because that's the chapter that I'm really interested in. So let's go back to, I wanted to see if I could show you my account. Okay, so if I go all the way back to the beginning and here's me down here at the bottom. Uh, okay, I actually was hoping that I would see um, what I had checked out. Hmm, okay, well, that's a question for me to research because I would think that would come up under my name. All right, well, you can sign out. Um, and I guess that, you know, I guess it does show up here what's checked out. There's the tree of life. So if I click on that, I can find out uh, here under where the title is. It tells you that that is checked out and when it expires. And then you can also choose read now down there at the bottom. And for our purposes, I had already bookmarked this, so I hopped to that. Um, so I hope that helps you understand how the EBSCO app works on your phone. It's very, very uh, perfect. I mean, it's perfect for the eBooks. And, but EBSCO is not just limiting the app to the eBooks because it also includes any kind of uh, newspaper articles, magazine articles, et cetera, that you can find on Inspire. So I hope today has been helpful for you.